Welcome to chapter 20 of the book of Proverbs. The trustworthiness of the righteous is the chapter title. It begins, I'll read a little in the Greek, and then we'll go in to the chapter. Akola stone enos ke evristikon methi pas de o limenomenos uk este sophos u the aferi apili vasilios themu leontos unrestrained wine and outrageous intoxication and all being laid waste shall not be wised. We went through the word enos. We have vino uh, for wine. Uh, In Proverbs chapter 12, you can go back. It talked about the wine and the leather bags bursting, which Jesus mentioned it. Water turned into wine uh, in the wedding at Cana and um, giving Jesus wine to drink when he was being crucified, and then how John the Baptist was not to drink wine. Uh, The Good Samaritan poured wine on the man who was beaten up. Jesus turns the water into wine, and then in other places, we can go back there in that chapter 12 and read all about it, but uh, unrestrained wine, there's a difference there between drinking a glass of wine with a dinner and unrestrained wine of being a drunkard and outrageous intoxication. Uh, Enos, and then methy, we have methyl alcohol, uh, intoxication, and all being laid waste shall not be wise. Uh, When I was 17 years old, probably, of all my friends, we got a bottle of wine, and I drank the whole bottle of wine I had never drunk before. It almost killed me, really. Uh, I can remember it vividly and throwing up, and uh, it's poisonous uh, alcohol. And But then again, it just depends on what purpose and how much you're drinking. It's best probably not to have alcohol because God uh, doesn't want John the Baptist to uh, have any uh, wine, but yet God did. So whichever... Uh, wherever you're at with with it, uh, it's best to treat it with respect and n- not to get intoxicated. The intimidation of a king differs not from the rage of a lion, and the one provoking him even is intermixing sins against his own soul. The king was supreme the law of the land at this time and in many countries throughout for th- um, thousands of years. And a king, his, you would not want to have the king mad at you because it was like the, a lion attacking you. And so this is what it's relating to, and you're hurting yourself by doing that. But yet politics, it's another thing. It seems like this is the part of politics is... Um, provoking uh, a leader. A doxa, doxology in the liturgy, the glory. It is glory to man to turn from reviling. But every foolish one is closely joined to such. Uh, There was a president of the United States, one fairly recent, without going into any names and not making a political uh, statement here, but uh, basically a observation that I saw of a man who was reviling people. Uh, Right when that person started running for office, he reviled the people that he was running against, calling them names and accusing them of terrible things, reviling. Uh, And every foolish one is closely joined to such. So I believe that that man lost, uh, was no longer eligible became a, for a president, did not become a president because of his reviling uh, uh, the people that he was dealing with. And it's foolish actions on his part, I believe. But 
this is what happens. And when people get into politics, it's um, sort of an open game for doing anything that you think uh, is okay is going to get you to where you want to go, winning the office. Not everybody, of course, does that. Verse 4, berating a lazy ones does not shame him. If a person is lazy and this is his way, you can berate him and say, get up and make fun of him and do all that, but it doesn't shame him. And likewise also is the one uh, borrowing grain in the harvest. Borrowing grain in the harvest um, and lending. In, ver in uh, Proverbs 19, it talks about lending to God if you're helping uh, poor people, giving to them you're like lending to God. Now, in Deuteronomy 15.8, it says, In opening, you shall open your hands to him. And that's uh, the brother's. And you shall lend a loan to him as much as he wants, and according to as much as he lacks. So there is nothing wrong with lending. And the same word is for borrowing. So it depends on the context. Uh, if the person is receiving, then he's the borrower. If the one is giving, he's the lender. In Deuteronomy 28.12, it says, And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Same word, lending and borrow in the Greek. Um, and the idea is the best thing is to be the one lending than the one borrowing. But some people don't want to lend to anybody, want to keep it to themselves, and are not giving in that way, are afraid that they'll not get it back. And there's a movie on which is basically a pawnbroker, a Jewish pawnbroker. It's called the pawnbroker, who had uh, went through Nazi Germany and his wife was killed and he came to New York and be, he became a pawnbroker. And people would bring in things and he would give them money for it and a ticket. And if they came back by a certain time, paid some interest, they would get their instrument back, whatever it was. Uh, now, there was also the famous... The Jewish bankers, you hear about the Jewish bankers, the Rothschilds are probably the most famous name. So within um, Judaism, which is not the same as the biblical uh, Mosaic law, uh, banking and lending and making money was a was fine, was, it was a good occupation, I suppose you could call it one. And then in Isaiah 24, 2, it says, the one borrowing as the one lending, and the one owing as the one who is owed. And here it's talking about how it's going to be bad for the people that are not following God and are taken captive. And if you were one that was um, lending, you're now going to be borrowing, and the, the uh, tables are going to be turned. Matthew 5:42 says, to the one asking you, and this is Jesus saying this, give. And the one wanting from you to borrow, you should not turn away. Now, you might think, well, I'm not going to get it back. I suppose that's a possibility, isn't it? But yet, this is the instructions that God gives not to turn, turn them away. And if you should lend, he says, from whom you hope to recover, what favor is it to you? For even sinners lend to sinners that they should receive what is equal. So we are told to lend to somebody that is in need. Chapter uh, Verse 5, counsel is deep water for the heart of a man. A lot there with counsel. It's very deep, and you can get acquire a lot of wisdom by counsel. And in an intelligent man shall draw it out, the counsel, uh, the, uh, whatever the good thing is that he's counseling you to do. A great man and a merciful man is precious, but 
It is work to find a trustworthy man. Now, merciful and precious are well, a great as precious as valuable and mercy. They're good things. Now, also a trustworthy man is basically showing it's every bit as important as these other things. Trustworthiness is a long term affair. It's not just one day having mercy on somebody like a judge, but it goes on to find somebody that's trustworthy in your life for a long period of time is a wonderful thing. The one who behaves unblemished in righteousness shall leave his children blessed. And then first person of righteousness that we I can think of would be Abraham. And he did leave uh, his blessings to Isaac and then Jacob and the 12 tribes. Whenever a just king shall sit upon a throne, not any evil withstands before his eyes. He knows what's going on. Who shall boast to have the heart pure? Or who shall speak openly to be clean from sins? Jesus? Anybody else? Well, I don't know if anybody has a pure heart. Uh, somebody can seem like they have a pure heart. I was just watching a story on these three girls who were friends and uh, towards each other. And for some reason, two of them ended up killing the third girl. And it seemed like the person was had a pure heart towards her, to, towards the third friend, but yet murder uh, took place. They killed her. Or who shall speak openly to be clean from sins? Well, Job, which we're going to be getting into soon, goes into this uh, this uh, theme of clean from sins and so forth. But we know that Jesus was clean from sins. Ten, an untrue weight, great and small, and untrue double measures are unclean before the Lord, even both and the one making them. So if you have a weight, two weights, one uh, is 15 ounces and one 17 ounces, but they both say 16 on it, then they're untrue. And when somebody's buying something then uh, from you, you put the, 17, uh, the six, 15 on there, but it says 16, but he's only getting 15 ounces of whatever it is. And when he's selling something, you put the 17 because it shows 17, but it's actually only 16. These are unclean before God. Cheating uh, in business is not what God wants, and they're unclean. The young man with a sacred man will be bound hand and foot in his practices, a sacred man set apart for God. And being a young man, this is who you should seek, and his way will be straight. The young man's way will be straight because he's uh, tying into somebody that's following God, in our case, Jesus. An ear hears, akui, acoustics comes from that, and an ophthalmos, an eye, ophthalmologist, sees, and both our works of the Lord. So what we put into our bodies, uh, God has allowed by giving us ears and eyes, but we need to do the, uh, put the correct thing in our bodies, not something that's evil or harmful. Do not love to speak ill, that you should not be lifted away. God could uh, listen to if you're speaking ill and bad things about people and so forth, then God is going to act. But open wide your eyes and be lifted up. A breads. 14. Kakon, kakon, bad, bad, says the one buying, but when he should depart, then he shall boast. This is sort of, in these days, they bartered for things. You went to a market, and I've been to these types of places and markets, and you go in, and 
uh, with your friend and somebody's, you want to buy a, I don't know, a belt. And the man go, says it's uh, $10 and you were willing to pay nine, but not a, but then you got the guy down to five or something like that. But you know, during the process of bartering, you're, oh man, this is terrible. That's a terrible price, nine dollars. That's terrible. No, no. And he starts walking away, and the guy says, "Well, how about eight? Eight? No, no, seven. And then, no, no. But once he gets it, he goes out and starts bragging that, oh man, did I get a good deal on that one? And boasting about what he did. There is gold and multitude of very costly stones, and the valued vessel, lips of understanding. Understanding, very costly vessel. The lips of understanding uh, could be talking in a way that you are helping another person or feeling uh, bad for them or happy for them and so forth by your uh, voice. Remove the garment of the one guaranteeing a loan for a stranger and take security away uh, f- for a strange woman. Um, now I have to go up here. I didn't make the lift. Uh, him. Bread of falsehood agreeable to a man, and thereupon his mouth shall be filled up of gravel. Bread turns into something bad because of his lying. A device uh, with counsel solidifies and let war be with guidance. So good idea here for a ruler of a country to think twice about attacking somebody uh, going to war. The one uncovering counsel in a Sanhedrin goes double-tongued and a person that's like in the Senate when closed hearings and goes out and talks to get himself uh, listened to by the media. Uh, This is not good. And be not mixed with the one widening the things of his own, doing the things of, of his own for himself. One speaking evil of father or mother, patera or mitera, paternal and maternal. His torch shall be extinguished. Not good to talk bad about your parents. And the pupils of his eye shall see darkness. It's sort of almost like a curse on the perp- person that's uh, speaking evil of the parents. And the pupils basically go blind. <laughs> May somebody that's mistreating their parents go blind. This They did that a lot. There's Different cultures that do these, they call them curses. A curse is not saying nasty words, but it's saying something like, you know, maybe mother uh, have uh, warts for the rest of her life or something. A portion being hastily gotten at first in the finalities shall not be blessed. And something that uh, gotten in haste, you know, without thinking about it, may end up being you spend your money on something and it just sits there and rots or gets old and never used because you didn't think about if you really needed it. You should not say, I will pay back the enemy, but wait on the Lord that he should help you. Jesus, though, turned the cheek and to the enemy and loving the enemy, but they didn't have Jesus here. They had Solomon the king, and this is uh, the instructions for these people. they let the Lord take care of it. Sort of the same thing with Jesus is saying. There again, a double weight is an abomination to the Lord, and a deceitful yoke balance scale is not good before him. We, that was what we talked about earlier about the weights. The footsteps of a man are straightened by the Lord. But a mortal, how can he comprehend his way? Uh, A man walking with the Lord, maybe, but a person that's not, how can he comprehend God's ways? It is a snare to a man quickly 
to sanctify anything of his own. For after the vowing, changing of the mind happens. It's sort of like, uh, I'm going to um, not do something, uh, sort of like, uh, maybe like fasting. I'm, I'm going to fast for five days and, and um, sanctify yourself. But then after you get into the second or third day, you change your mind, you start eating and break the fast. That is, uh, it's a snare to a man to quickly do that. It's not good to do that. You do what you say. That's what it's teaching. A wise king is a winnower of impious ones, which Solomon was with the two women that had uh, babies and the one died and the one other woman switched the dead kid, the dead child for the a living child. But Solomon saw through the ruse and told them to uh, slice the baby in half and eat, give each woman, woman one half. And the woman who was the mother said, no, give it to the other woman. The other woman said, yes, so slice them in half. Solomon said, well, the woman that said to give it to the other woman is the mother. And he uh, was a winnower of impious ones, the woman who uh, lied. And he puts them to the wheel. And that would be some type of a torture machine that they put people to and punish them. Phos, light, phosphorus. The light of the Lord is the breath of men, which searches the storerooms of the bellies. And God uh, is the light of is the, the light to us is Jesus Christ. Jesus lives within us and he searches the things of our insides of our heart and what we are going to do or want to do. Charity, giving money and truth are a guard to a king and they will surround his throne in righteousness giving money to people that need it and being truthful are things that are what a king should be doing. An ornament to young men is wisdom, and the glory of older men is gray hair. Well, I've got the gray hair, and glory, well, so be it. Bruises and Breaks meet with bad men, kakis, kaka, and calamities shall come to the storerooms of their bellies. Um, and so we don't want uh, to be uh, b bruises and uh, breaks, meet with bad men. And we don't want to be bad person because... Bad things will happen, calamities, and you see it over and over and over in the news with people doing terrible things and how it ruins their lives and other people's lives around them. Chapter 21, our next video seminar, The Pious and Impious. Hope you join us. Till the next time, God bless.